Japan is a pioneer in robotic research. There, I got to know one of the world's top roboticists and his mind-blowing creations. Our topic today on SHIFT. <music> Professor Hiroshi Ishiguro is a real rock star in the robotic scene. He specializes in human-robot interaction and androids. Robots that look like humans. I met him at his lab in Kyoto. Uh, hi everybody, my name is Hiroshi Shiguro. I think uh, near futures, you know, especially in Japan, we need to have uh, more robots that can support our daily life. We need more robots. Why exactly? In Japan, people are more comfortable with robots than elsewhere. That may have to do with the influence of Shintoism, which states that all things have a spirit, even robots could have a soul. That might be why they are more willing to use robots to solve social problems. Japan has a super-aging society. The average age is 48.4 years. The result is a lack of manpower for everything from factory workers to caregivers for the elderly. So, since 2015, the Japanese government has turned to robots for help. Its new robot strategy program actively supports such technologies. But no one has gone as far as Hiroshi Ishiguro. He's even created his own robotic twin, called Geminoid. Geminoid doesn't act autonomously. Instead, it's remote controlled in real time by an operator. Oh, uh, what is it like to sit in that room all day? I'm very, very sad. Sad? <laughs> oh, 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 I'm, 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 very, I'm very sad. And how does he keep his twin looking like him long term? We are updating the robots, and this is, you know, and, and I also updating the, my face also. Mm. So the question is, which is the cheaper, you know, <laughs> the right plastic <laughs> surgeries or you know the uh, replacement of uh, okay. skin? Right? So usually, you know, the right plastic surgery is much cheaper. So. Okay. <laughs> this telenoid is also remote controlled. Its software transmits facial expressions and speech simultaneously. But my question about her boss puts the technician behind Telenoid on the spot. I have one question. Yes? What kind of man is your inventor? <laughs> You're asking about the inventor? About your inventor. What, what kind of uh, oh, guy I is know. he? He's next to me right now. <laughs> yes, so, so it's hard for you to talk about him. Yeah, how do you evaluate me? <laughs> <laughs> he created me very neutral. Yes. That made me easier to talk to anyone. Okay. Yeah, that's, very serious cancer. That's very, yeah, <laughs> she's very diplomatic. Can I hug you? Okay, yes, I will please. try to hug you. Here we go. I feel hugged. And wow. I feel, yeah. I'm but, creepy. Yeah, they say you're creepy, but what? holding you in my hands, mm -hmm. I have to say, um, it feels natural. It yeah. does. I'm, I'm really, cute, right? I'm really very, very <laughs> surprised. Bye bye. Uh, nice talking to you. Nice talking to you too, Telenoid. Thank you. That was very interesting. Okay, I admit that Telenoid does look a bit creepy, but what made me uncomfortable was holding onto such an expensive high tech device. Oops. What really surprised me was how its neutral appearance affected the impression it made. The Telenoid offers a blank surface to protect your own imagination onto. And since the technician had a pleasant voice, the telenoid made an altogether good impression. Hiroshi Ishiguro's creations sometimes resemble works of art. They pose existential questions like, what does it mean to be human? That's something Ishiguro also explores in his work. I'm interested in the human side. I, uh, you know, my motivation is to understand what human is. So therefore, you know, I... I studied so many things and uh, I'm studying about the humans by using an robot. Born in Shiga in 1963, Hiroshi Ishiguro loved oil painting in his youth. He dreamed of being an artist, but wound up studying in computer science. Instead, he became an engineer and developed a keen interest in AI and robotics. When I have created the first robot, I was thinking about the, what is the idea of robots for interacting with people. Hiroshi Ishiguro has been working on creating robots that resemble humans for decades. He's also developed female and child androids. This one was fashioned after his daughter, who was four at the time. 
Geminoid, his robotic twin, was a prototype for a new generation of humanoid robots. The remote-controlled android has already stood in for Ishiguro during speeches and university lectures. Ishiguro hopes his robot clone will help him find out more about what human presence really means. And he wants to get to know himself better too. The most important thing for, for me was uh, when I have created my copy, then I don't understand the, myself. I cannot have uh, the objective views about the myself. I don't know that my face and my behaviors and my voice, right? Through the interactions, I can understand myself. So that kind of uh, you know, the finding was uh, very important for me. A robotic twin to help you understand yourself better? Amazing. But to many, Ishiguro's androids are just plain creepy. There's even a technical term for the eerie feeling humanoid robots provoke, uncanny valley. It's clearly visible in this graphic. The uncanny valley theory states that when a robot looks too human, people are repulsed. But to ensure positive interaction, we must feel comfortable with humanoid robots. Professor Ishiguro believes the uncanny valley will soon be a thing of the past, thanks to this android. Meet Erika. She's capable of understanding language, in this case Japanese. She can talk and can assume a number of human-like facial expressions. Erika can usually be found sitting in the lobby of the ATR Research Institute near Kyoto. For visitors, she's an attraction. For the staff, she's completely normal. Our Android is not uncanny anymore, right? So um, the uh, reaction of people is, is getting uh, very natural. You think uh, this is an android and this is uh, you know, quite unnatural uh, you know, scene, right? But in my campus, always, and my student is moving the android in the campus and the robot is moving around the campus. But uh, no, nobody pay attention to the robot. But making robots that can communicate like people, that understand the topics and contexts necessary to make a conversation seem natural, is still a big challenge for AI. In many ways, Erika is at the forefront of robotic research. What her conversation partner can't see is that she's connected to a computer system that's constantly scanning him. In this window, you can see where all the people are. One person is here. Erika is here. So Erika can recognize or detect that there's a person on her right side. Then, through this camera here, she picks up the direction of the person's face, their facial expression, and can associate who this person is. The software also analyzes her conversation partner's voice, so Erika can engage in dialogue with him. In order to design a robot that talks to ordinary people properly, human input is necessary. But the android independently determines the topic selection and strategy. Erika is an autonomously operating robot. But part of the process is predetermined by humans. Erika really impressed me. For decades, Japan has been a leader in the development and production of robots. Over half of the world's robots are made here, many for industrial use. But robots also play a big role in Japanese pop culture. In Tokyo, this full-size Gundam robot turns many heads. Machines have even made their way into the music world. How does a symphony sound when it's conducted by a robot? Hiroshi Ishiguro's Android Auto 3 has been touring the world as an orchestra conductor since 2018. The music was written by Japanese composer Keichiro Shibuya. Equipped with state-of-the-art artificial intelligence, Auto 3 has something like its own neural network. It makes the robot move spontaneously as it interprets the score. The premise is that the android itself is moving according to its own will. However, as a separate program, the structural elements of the score created by Mr. Shibuya are interjected into the independent and autonomous actions. The music is pre-programmed, but Auto 3 interprets it differently each time. Does that make it creative thanks to AI, or are its conducting skills a matter of chance? 
And here's another question. Can robots convey spirituality? In Germany, we had a blessing robot called Bless You Too. Well, meanwhile, Hiroshi Ishiguro has created his version of a Buddhist priest. And in terms of technology alone, it's of an entirely different caliber. An android that ponders what it means to be human. Desire, anger, selfishness. For around a year, Minder has been explaining the basics of the Buddhist faith. His sermon is part of a multimedia performance. Some people find it odd when they arrive. But 25 minutes later, after experiencing the ceremony, they're quite accepting of Mindar. Hiroshi Ishiguro developed Minder in cooperation with the team from Osaka University. They spent some 900,000 euros creating it. Head, face and hands are made from silicone and modeled after human anatomy. The rest was deliberately left to look like a machine. Originally, in, the, uh, in the Buddhism, it was just a message from the god. Then, you know, the Sama made the statues. So now we have a robot technology. Why we don't use the uh, robot technology for making the Buddha? The temple is a kind of uh, a virtual reality, I think. At Kyoto's Kodachi Temple, they hope that Minder will spark fresh interest in Buddhism. In the future, Minder could be more than just a high-tech attraction. They're thinking of feeding the robot with Buddhist teachings and knowledge and equipping it with AI software. Then, Minder could answer questions on its own, like an interactive Buddhist Wikipedia. Robots can be priests, artists and even caregivers. In Japan, the prospect of machines taking over important jobs in society is not a frightening one. What's your view? Should robots play a bigger role in our lives or does the idea scare you? Tell us on Facebook or DW.com. And to learn more about Japanese robot developers, check out our YouTube channel. That's it from me for now. See you next time.